Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you for joining me today. So this is a little different than the videos I usually do and I really felt the need to share this video because it's a very personal thing to me, but it also, I think, I hope, will help many of you out there who may be struggling with some of the same issues. And I wanna help give solutions to a lot of the problems that are out there and some of our disorganization. So that brings me to this video. And trust me, there's been many people who've told me not to make this video. So <laughs> I am going out on a limb and doing this. I was diagnosed with ADHD many years ago, and I know it goes by different names now. I think neurodivergent, and there's all kinds of different names for it. Either way, it doesn't matter what it's called. I know I have it and I knew I had it from the time I was real little, even though I didn't have a name for it. <laughs> I've always been a little scattered, unorganized, and then there's some other characteristics that come with ADHD that I'm sure you could look up and maybe are familiar with yourself. When I started quilting, I learned a lot of techniques that helped me in quilting because let's be honest, you have to be organized to be a quilter, at least somewhat organized. And I came up with some ways to help me with that over the years. and really hone some of those skills. So I wanna share some of those with you today. Whether you have ADHD, whether it's diagnosed or you just suspect that you do, or you just want some tips on organization, this video is for you. So let's dig into the tips. The first one is I don't work on one project at a time. I have multiple projects going all the time and it's everywhere. <laughs> I have two or three projects set up at a time in different areas and different zones in my sewing room and I'll grab and go when I'm ready to work on something and then when I get bored after a few minutes or maybe an hour or maybe days, I'll go and pull the other project and I'll work on them simultaneously. That's the way my brain works and I've learned to lean in to the way my brain works. I like to keep things interesting. I get very bored easily. Again, that goes back to the ADHD and this just keeps me motivated and I have fun with it. And that's what it's all about as far as quilting goes, right? One way I stay organized with this is I do have these containers, which a lot of people have these, right? I limit the number of containers I buy, however, because there was a time when I would just keep buying containers and putting projects in them. Now I try my best to have about 12 of them. And when I want to start a new project, I need to have an empty container. So that's kind of my rule. Do I always follow it? No, I don't always follow it, but it does help. So I have this container of a project I've been working on for a, a while, I think a year and a half now. And it's this pumpkin project. And you probably have seen me talk about this project in other videos. So it's this project here. You can see the container is here. It's a pretty big project because I think there's 106 of these pumpkins. So I keep all my stuff organized here on top and I make a booklet and I'll show you how to make this booklet in a moment. But at first I wanna talk about this. This is my graphic organizer I made on Canva and you can see here. I made pumpkins and when I finish a pumpkin I get to color it in so <laughs> you can see I am right here. I still have quite a few pumpkins to do. I'll also indicate that I've got the fabrics together to make these pumpkins. That's what the check mark means and I have them broken up into little packets so I can grab and go with that packet and make the pumpkins that I need to. So everything I need to is in here. And there's, I don't know, five or six packets in here ready to go. So let's get back to this little booklet. This comes to me from teaching. So I used to make these all the time with my students for teaching or even myself when I was teaching novels when I was an English teacher. This is a little paper booklet and it's made with one sheet of paper. You can see it here. I'm gonna show you how to make that in a moment. But first I wanna tell you about it. And it, it is, it's literally a little book that you can open up and I take notes. So let's see, the last time I worked on this particular project was March 17th. <laughs> it's been a bit. I talk about exactly what I did. I made sets because backgrounds were a mess. I separated the backgrounds into sets to make a grab and go easier. So just some other notes. I'll put a picture of this. Very messy. They're just notes for me and it keeps me on track with making these projects. So let's, let me show you how to make one of these little booklets. You just take a piece of printer paper and you fold it in half. top to bottom. We call that a hamburger fold in teaching, if <laughs> you ever wanna know. And then we fold it in half again. And make sure you crease it pretty well. And then fold it in half one more time. Next, you're going to open it up to this orientation and you're gonna cut to the first seam. So you're gonna cut on that fold to the first seam. When you open the whole thing up, it will look like this. 
And next the fun comes in because it's just the way you fold it. You're gonna do a little bit of an accordion fold in the middle and fold it together to make this little booklet. And when you're done, you have this. Isn't it cute? It doesn't have to be fancy. You can see my edges aren't perfect on this one. That's okay, it's still gonna work as a little booklet and it'll keep you organized with your projects. Whoops, I just dropped it. We're gonna put that aside. <laughs> the next thing I do is I make everything a game. And you saw the sheet here, right? This is part of the game. And this doesn't have to be fancy like this. You could just draw boxes on a piece of paper and color them in as you go. You could draw out the blocks, whatever it would be, but it does keep you on track because you get a visual of exactly what you need to do to finish the project. And for me, it's a lot of fun. I like coloring in those pumpkins when I'm done working. But something else I do is I always use my timer. Now I have the timer somewhere. I don't even know where it is right now. It's the one, oh, I know where it is. Let me get it. This one, the one that Karen Brown uses, and it's like this timer that you turn and you, I don't know, you, it, it, it. anyway, <laughs> I would use this, but honestly, it scares me because I don't know how much time's left on this thing. And then when it finally does go, I jump and it's just, it's a disaster. So I don't use this. So I just set a timer on my microwave, which is right outside my sewing room door, but you can use whatever timer, you can use your phone, whatever it may be. <laughs> I just hated jumping when this thing would go off. So I don't use that, but I set a timer for 15 minutes and that's how I clean and get things organized because sometimes you have to clean up. Even though I enjoy working in the chaos and the mess and having many projects going at once, sometimes I do have to clean up so I can remember where things are and it makes my sewing experience easier. So I race the clock, I play a game, I set a timer and I get as much done as I possibly can in that 15 minutes. And usually what happens if I have more than 15 minutes of work, rarely does that happen. But if I do have more than 15 minutes, I'll just set another 15 minutes on the timer. By then I'm in the mode of cleaning up the room or whatever project I need to clean up, keep going. And that can go for sewing on bindings. It could be whatever pro part of the process that you don't like doing that works wonders is setting that timer and making a game of it. One of my sayings is ish. So I'll say things are clean-ish, things are straight-ish, things are organized-ish. I never put myself into a box where I say, oh, it's clean. You know, my room is clean. It's never clean. And by using the ending ish, that kind of gives me an out, which is wonderful when you have ADHD because there's a lot of guilt that goes along with having ADHD. And speaking of cleaning up, I have trash cans everywhere in my sewing space. I have them under my desk, under my sewing machine. I have them just spread out all over the place because when I am cleaning up, I like to have it right there so the mess doesn't get too big and then I can empty them whenever they get full. And I also keep a basket by my door of anything that doesn't belong in here. So when I am cleaning up, it's easy. I don't have to leave the room. I can just put them in the basket. And then hopefully, eventually they'll make it to their real home. And although I have a ton, a ton of tips, my last tip for you is making organization pretty. I find I am so much better and more organized if things are pretty. For example, back here, if you've ever seen this on my shelf, I have a vintage, sewing basket and you can see inside are all my glues. Whoops, I'm gonna drop it. That will be bad, I'm not gonna drop it. Let me put it down and get it for you. Okay, so all the glues that I would ever need are in here and it's pretty and I, I'll put things away because I think it's so pretty. I also have this which has all of the bias makers thingies in it and then I have jars with the salvages and I just like to have organization systems that are pretty I tend to keep up with them better if I have those. Oh, and one last thing. This is a doozy. Don't organize things that you don't need to organize. I fall into this trap occasionally and I have to remind myself not to do that. For example, I almost did it today. I have these pins. You can see them here. I have a ton of pin cushions all over. Ugh. You can see I wanted to go through and organize all my pins by type. Why? There's absolutely no reason I need to do that but I get it into my head that I do and it would take me hours because I have a lot of pins. So why do it? Knowing yourself is really important when you have ADHD or when with anything to stay organized and to stay on top of things. I hope this video helped you in some way. I know it's unconventional for me. I'm not as uh, cheerful as I normally am because this is a serious subject. There's a lot of people that really struggle with this and need the help that that they should, they deserve. We all deserve to have the help that we need, right?
If you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to help. I enjoy this. I want to help you be the most successful quilter. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I'll see you real soon. Bye.